Whoa! The leader, Leonardo. The warrior, Raphael. The inventor, Donatello. And the cute one, Michelangelo. Wow, that's me. She knows us, dudes. I found you. I actually found you. The turtle warriors of legend. This is so grokking cold. Live from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Ryan, Alex, and Darby. Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. And welcome once again, everybody, to a new episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. Really uh, sort of a light month in terms of news today. So much like all the movie studios that keep putting out crappy comic book movies so they can keep the licensing rights. Pretty much what we're doing today in this month's episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? Ryan, Alex, I know you're there. Oh, yeah. Nice Fantastic Four burn, by the way. (laughs) It was. Very good. Uh, yeah, I saw something online saying that um, uh, the best Fantastic Four movie ever made was uh, The Incredibles. Yeah, oh, of course it is. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's a second one of those coming out soon now, so happy about that. There is. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, so let's start off the Turtle Power podcast by talking about uh, The Incredibles, shall we? That's how slow of a uh, news month it's been for <laughs> us, huh? Yeah, there's there's definitely not been a whole lot going on in the world of turtles uh, post SDCC um, I think the world is just waiting for Star Wars I, I know I am I sure as hell am <laughs> um, <laughs> I think everybody's just waiting and gearing up for that all the stores are focusing on on Star Wars collectibles and uh, um, I mean we, we do have coming up it'll be next month but uh of course, issue 50 of the IDW series is going to be coming out. Uh, and I believe it's September 30th, I think, is the scheduled date right now uh, for the big double issue. Um, we hope to uh, have a little something planned for that. we got some things in the works um, to hopefully get some people on the show. But uh, no promises, of course. But uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do to celebrate this momentous issue for a, uh, an amazing series. So, uh, such but... a such a non amount of news this month that Ryan was like, "I'm literally going to send you guys the show notes maybe like five minutes before showtime, and we're just going to wing it." Yeah, well, that and I've just been way too damn busy, way way too busy. Um, just lots of uh, lots of testing uh, with at work and. Lots of uh, flying helicopter uh, simulators and stuff like that. So, but uh, I'm getting pretty good, man. I'm getting pretty good uh, flying helicopters. I, I gotta say, I impressed myself this week. So, flying simulator helicopters. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> it's it's not like I'm, we'll, I'm playing on PlayStation. I, I mean, it's a full you know, it's a full sim, it's a full simulator. It's a full H60 cockpit. Yeah, so. just like flight simulator on the PC, right? No, yeah, nothing I was like the same that. Thing, you know, like I'm yeah, talking, was, there are like Need for Speed is a great driving simulator. You know, yeah, it's... especially when you get the uh, you know the the actual wheel, you know, the, the actual like uh, steering wheel attachment. That, yeah, that just don't it do legit. it when you're drunk, though. You, you can't you can't drink and play that game. It's well, just... especially Need for Speed, because I mean, you're getting chased by the cops already. I mean, you don't need to add a DUI to your. You know. uh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like how you thought you were going to jail for like three lifetimes. Guess what? Although Ryan, that poses, a, you know, I mean, why, why, why don't you get drunk and then fly one of those simulators? Can you do that? I mean, I know it's, it's... hard enough sober. That's why. 
you're a scientist, Ryan. Just say you're doing it for like experimentation. She had a hypothesis that like being drunk relaxes you, so you'll land the plane easier. <laughs> um, I'm sure that science has been completed, uh, probably by the army, um, or or the navy. I'm sure somebody. Did. Well, there were there were some pilots that recently got. Uh, I think they got. Um, well, I know they got fired, but uh, I can't remember what uh, what airline Guys, it was. I'm, I'm so glad that we're talking about drunk pilots during the Turtle Power podcast. Yeah, it's great. You know, it, it's, it's it's all it's gonna a come slow together. news. It's going to come together. It's, it's going to come together. <laughs> but anyway, they got a, they they got a, uh, at least I, I think arrested, but at least definitely fired. We'll uh, be drunk somehow. Oh, I've got uh, a connection. You wait. So I was uh, I was you know I was hoping maybe you could test that theory out. But anyway, what do you got? Okay, so. Alex, you were just here last weekend, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, we were in in the the podcast recording room slash Ninja Turtles slash Star Wars slash Disney slash video game room, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we were looking at uh, just call it your figures. man cave. Just because it has Disney in it doesn't mean it's not a man cave. Just call it your man cave. You have the no girls allowed sign outside. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we were looking through all the uh, action figures, and we we discussed the Raphael a- uh, astronaut figure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it, yes. it makes no sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so well, go ahead, Alex. Go ahead. Maybe you can explain it better than I can, because there's well, two. Right. There's there's the uh, there's the one that we always talk about, which is when they all kind of had their own. Uh, um, their own kind of, um, what do you call it, uh, profession kind of deal? Profession? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is the these are the Apollo figures. Mm-hmm. So they're all astronauts in this. Yes. Every every single turtle is an astronaut. They all go into space. Um, and so this is what, – what, do you remember what a, what mission it was? Is it a made-up mission or is it, a, is it an no, astronaut? It was uh, the t- celebrating the 25th anniversary of Apollo 11. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah. So um, – not the cool one, which was 13. That, that's the one with Tom Hanks, but 11. <laughs> oh, yeah, because the one that actually <laughs> landed cool on the moon one. wasn't cool at all. <laughs> no, 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 no. They would, they, they would have made a movie, a good movie out of it if it was, and they haven't. So there you go. Oh, Tom man. Hanks, Dude, Kevin they've Bacon. Had plenty, they've had plenty of movies and shows about Apollo 11. I said they good ones. They had an entire ones. series <laughs> produced by Tom Hanks I all said, those years ago. I said good ones. Oh, that, man. that was a good one. It was that not was, a good series. Was it was so trash. Oh. So good. I can't even remember it the name was of it. Man, trash. Man Apollo 13 is where it's at. Everybody can agree. Everybody can. Everybody knows. Mission I mean, it's, it's pointless to even argue this. You're you're failing. Uh, yeah. No, not going to happen. Tom Hanks was like, yeah, I was in a movie about Apollo 13, but you know what's a better story? The one that I'm going to produce. It's like, yeah. no, you know what I can make a ton of money off of and capitalize on the fact that I was in Apollo 13? A movie about the actual landing. So what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is all the turtles in toy form were astronauts, which pretty much just negates Raph's cool factor. Like, hey, was anybody else a a PI, private investigator with a mask like Donatello or whatever the hell Leo was? What was Leo? Samurai. Samurai were – oh, well, they were all samurais too. Ha! Donnie with the only one that's – Yes! Anyway, Raph's been in a trench yeah, coat. Yeah, Raph's been in a trench coat. And a, yeah, and yeah a, but, a but, but not a private investigator's trench coat. Uh, you don't know. In fact, I mean, Raph, Raph's trench coat was so lame that to, that that the Nickelodeon Raph actually had to rag on it. Look, if you put a yeah, yeah. brown trench coat on and a brown like uh, fedora, you automatically become a private investigator. Did I'm any pretty of sure the other that's how turtles have the toys where they have I, masks. Either that or a and, flash. And a yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> April O'Neil, Channel Three Eyewitness News. All right. Well, okay. I got another segue here. So we were talking about space, right? And space stuff. You've Fire got, uh, you know, Star Wars, right? We were just talking about Star Wars. Well, what's what's an attraction where Star Wars goes in space? Of course, Star Tours. Now, Star Tours is a great attraction, but it's not Shredder's Mutant Masher, which is coming to the Nickelodeon universe in November. That's right. Uh, oh, look at that. Wow. Segue. Yeah, that, that, that was a stretch. Good job. You're welcome. <laughs> so in a press release today, or today meaning uh, I hope proud of that end of July, uh, Mall of America. Now, they've already got their, uh, um, what's it called? The shell something. 
Uh, they've already got Shell Shock. That's it. Shell Shock ride that opened in 2012. Uh, so, and that's been there, and it and it it's going. I actually, if any of our listeners have been on this attraction, please let us know how it is, because we haven't been. We have I haven't been to. Um, yeah, I don't. And I don't plan on making a trip to Minnesota because yeah. it's Minnesota. So, yeah. uh, so if you no can, offense, let to us know. Minnesota listeners, by the way, Just, right? I've, so no. they've got a new one. Shredder's Mutant Masher will open Nickelodeon Universe theme park november 2015 it's gonna be a 5,000 square foot interactive attraction sending riders through a unique mutation experience in addition to the pulse pounding thrill ride experience (laughs) upon entering the cube riders will begin the mutation experience by stepping into a mad scientist like lab where they pass hazardous material containers and remnants of past mutant experiments all are props of course of course Contributing to the Im- <laughs> no, it's genuine <laughs> radioactive narrative. Radioactive material oh just my everywhere. Gosh. That's oh. hilarious that they actually had to put that in the uh, in the press release. The ride the itself of this ride may include cancer. <laughs> the ride itself functions as a giant pendulum, spinning and swinging riders more than fifty feet in the air. When the ride is finished, the mutation is complete. Riders will have the opportunity to view their mutant photo, complete with horns, bug eyes, and other superimposed features. Photos will be available. I'll charge you twenty five bucks for. Yep, taking the place of the recently retired Danny Phantom's Ghost Zone. Yeah, screw that ride. Shredder's Mutant Masher will also include retail space (laughs) featuring (laughs) TMNT merchandise and other Nickelodeon products. This is blah blah blah. So, yeah, uh, I kind of get the. You know what they're talking about? It's like so. Yeah, you you see them at every carnival. I mean, yeah, yeah. There's just a it's a carnival ride that they're going to theme to turtles. You know, so that's that's all it is. So yeah, if uh, if you make it up there, or if you've made it up there for uh, for the other turtles attraction, let us know. Let us know how it is. Basically, it's sounds different. like uh, Mall America is uh, is basically just sounding like Dino World USA. So pretty much, just a bunch of reused carnival rides, and there you go. Pretty much. Right into video game news, we've got a. Uh, this is pretty cool. Now, uh, nope. if, if if anybody out there is a, a WWE fan, like uh, like me, like you too as well. Not as much eh, as me. Me, me, a eh, little bit. Meh. You've been, you've been to wrestling events. You've been, you went with. Oh me. yeah, oh. No, I mean, I, I used to be yeah. a huge fan. Nowadays, it's. Uh, I mean, eh. Right. It's just so hard to get into the storylines, and do I even really want to? And uh, all the celebrities now, and it's just, I don't know. I'm not into it. Well, speaking of uh, celebrities, yeah, we'll get to that Casey in a second. Jones. Um, so one of the uh, WWE superstars whose um, on, his on-screen name is Xavier Woods, and uh, I guess his... his um, well, anyway, he's got a he's got a show. He's got a YouTube show called Superstar Save Point. It's it's uh, on the YouTube channel Up Up Down Down. And uh, what he what he does is he plays classic video games with other WWE superstars. And in this one, it's with current WWE World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins. And of course, the why are we talking about it? It's because Seth Rollins requested to play Turtles Four Turtles in Time. So, uh, it's pretty cool. It's, um, you get to see which, uh, Henry even makes an appearance in the video. Yeah, which, no, turtle, which Turtles in Time is it, by the way? I believe it's the SNES it's... port okay. of it. Nintendo version. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the original um, console version. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Okay. Uh, uh, so, we've got a link to that oh. in the show notes. Oh, so, oh, check it out. And Ryan. And Ryan. Oh, Dar- Darby. Darby, where are you That's... going? Yeah, we have a link to it. Hey, tell me, what Darby. turtles did they pick? Uh, the turtles that they picked Ryan, were what Xavier turtles Woods. did they pick to play as? Xavier Woods picked... Oh, shut up. You already know the answer. Whatever. <laughs> I hate you so much. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I the... do know it. That's why I asked. Yeah. Uh, Seth <laughs> Rollins chose um, Leo, 
And Xavier Woods. For those who don't know, Xavier Woods and the world heavyweight champ Donatella. Yeah. Um, oh, Xavier Woods was Donatella, not the world heavyweight champion Donatella. Xavier more... Woods was was Donatella. Yes, because he's a PhD, uh, you know, student just like I am, and uh, uh, Seth Rollins was Leonardo. I don't know why. So congratulations, uh, you two. Really? Yeah. I mean, no, it's because Donatella's the best one to use in a video game. And you know, I mean, WWE champ chooses Leonardo just by chance. No, I don't think so. So, uh, last bit of uh, video game news is that um, this is interesting. Nintendo teams with Nickelodeon for new 3DS themes. So, uh, I, so PlayStation does the same thing. Xbox does the same thing. Uh, you can um, you can download you know background themes and and uh, background images or wallpapers and stuff. So, but apparently this is going to be just for. Um, the home menu on 3DS, 2DS, and the new Nintendo 3DS, and it's going to be available in. Now this is this is the weird part. Yeah, incredibly weird. Italy, France, Spain, Portugal, Greece, and South Africa. Because most of the Ninja Turtles fans are in these countries. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Um. Now I I like. We mentioned it before. You know, I don't have a 3DS. Darby, you do have a 3DS? I do. I just haven't played it in years. I know it's around here somewhere because I just recently moved. So I know it's like in the same room as me right now, but I really don't know much. It's white. That's all I really remember about it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Well, if you uh, if you get a chance, you can uh, maybe you can uh, check on and see if if these in fact do come to. It's it's US. it's kind it's kind of crazy to me that Japan isn't included in this because their their handheld game is so strong like that's all they do over there, uh, that in arcades, and it's just crazy to me that that's not. You're included. more surprised that it's not available in Japan instead of not available in America, yeah, <laughs> where ninety eight percent of Turtles fans are. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. It, it, not only that, ninety eight percent is not an accurate number. Look, like, can 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 we clear that up? You're, you're saying that 98 percent of all turtle fans reside in the U.S., so it, that is just absolutely absurd. Um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have been globalized for uh, for decades now, and you can't tell me that 98 percent of all fans reside in the U.S. That's the reason they they wouldn't be releasing them. It'd be kind of pointless to be releasing them in France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Greece, and South America. Had you know that that being the case. So uh, 98% is absolutely a skewed number, A. B, I believe that if, if any country were to have the second most uh, uh, turtle fans, it would be Japan. And C, they by far supersede uh, um, the U.S. in handheld sales. So They do. There and you go. When I was there, I saw the turtle toys. I saw, I saw the turtle action figures there. It, there. There are turtle fans. Remember the, the little tiny one I got? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, in Nick Turtles news, uh, we do have an update on uh, home video releases. On, on the trolling that is Nickelodeon against Ryan. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it this kind of feel like that, doesn't it? It's well, starting to. You can't help but start taking it a little personally. I concur. I concur. Well, um so if you haven't picked up on what we're talking about here, uh, season one, season two have been announced that they're going to be released in a, uh, that's amazing. I can't wait to pick up that Blu-ray set. That'll be great to play on my Blu-ray player that I've had for six years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no Darby, it's going to be DVDs. It's going to be first and second (laughs) seasons, DVDs, eight DVD package available Ah! in stores this fall. Eight DVDs, which could fit like oh, on one Blu-ray. <laughs> Such a joke. <sighs> yeah. Such a joke. So, um, yeah, still disappointed. Still, uh, still confused. Still don't know what the hell's going on. Why can't we get a Blu-ray release? I mean, it's is it that, is it that much now. cheaper to produce 
eight DVDs as opposed to maybe three one Blu-rays? Blue. No, one, one Blu-ray. One Blu-ray. I guarantee. No, uh, uh, no maybe it'd two. Probably be, it'd no, probably be... fit, dude, dude, that's that's what? How many episodes? I mean, I th- I think you could fit that on one DVD. Well, the difference is too is that if you put I it mean, on Blu-ray, Blu-ray, then you could have the HD version as well, which you're not getting when it's on DVD. You're talking 480p on DVD for right. each episode, right? So it's just it's just dis- it's disappointing. It's disappointing. What why they would take the beautiful HD animation of the show and then decrease it down to 480p so that they can put it out on DVD? I I, I don't get it. I just I don't get it. Somebody at dis- at Nickelodeon, somebody at Viacom, please let me know. Please, I'm lost. I, I, I just I don't get it. Um, it's it's kind of stupid. This just, this seemed like the perfect opportunity to make that transition too. Yes, but, it know. is. It is the perfect opportunity. Ugh. Anyway, it, and of course, <laughs> we're not saying anything with regards to the quality of the show itself. The quality of the show is is fantastic. No, uh, it's all you tight asses over there uh, <laughs> that don't produce Blu-rays. That's 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 what we're getting at. Yeah, yeah. It's somebody in marketing that is like, you know, our our research shows that the the DVD market is still, uh, you know, really our primary focus in the uh, commercial. You know, um, mothers and fathers purchasing for the uh, eight to twelve demographic. Like, Stop! Shut up! It's Blu-ray. The eight to twelve demographic don't know what DVDs are. <laughs> You're probably right. A really long time. They're like, there's what DVD? What does that What does that mean? I just, I just love how how Ryan just turned into Ben Stein for a good you know ten seconds. Yeah, oh, it was great. I just not <laughs> mad at it though. Well, as we were as I was just saying, the quality of the show still fantastic. Um, we just had the latest two episodes come out: uh, Turtles in Time and Tale of the Yokai, and uh, it's a great two part arc. I think it's only going to be two. Because the end of uh, Tale of the Yokai, uh, it, it really points as though they're going in a different direction now uh, after that. But uh, that'll be, as we're recording, that'll be tomorrow, I believe. So, But uh, fantastic episodes. Um, it's really cool to see Renette. Of course, we got the, uh, the intro with Renette on the show today. And then uh, I want to play this little clip from tale of the yokai (laughs) so if if you haven't watched it yet uh, you can say there's some point some spoilers but um if you i don't think it's not going to ruin the whole episode but basically tale of the yokai i'll just set it up for you uh the turtles in this episode are transported back 16 years in japan um and uh, with the the turtles the nick turtles version um, that's where we find Hamato Yoshi and Oroku Saki, still in Japan. So this is a clip of Oroku Saki talking to the Hamato clan. Not the Foot clan, the Hamato clan. So it's a little different. But I want to preface this. I love this stuff. I Every version of the Turtles, like this kind of stuff, where you get into like the history of Shredder and history of the, of the clans. I love it. Anyway, so let's get to that clip right now. The Hamato clan has gotten weak. It is rotting from the inside. The foot was the oldest of all ninja clans. But it was wiped out by Hamato Yuta when he slain its master, Oroku Kaiji, my father. <gasps> I was adopted by the Hamato clan as an infant. Raised by my enemy in ignorance, I will have my revenge on them all. All right, so granted, so- there's, there's one big piece of info right there. <laughs> so, so Splinter and Shredder are adopted brothers. Yes, mm-hmm. that's awesome. That, yes. that is freaking awesome. So, and I, I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've had that 
as part of turtle lore in all the different in the, in the turtles multiverse i'm pretty sure this is the first time that that's happened i've got 10 bucks right now anybody who wants to take me on this section michelangelo is the first one to call him uncle shredder <laughs> <laughs> so um you know, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to ruin anything else with the, with the episode. You definitely suggest you watch it. It's fantastic. Um, it, what it basically does is it, it explains everything that has happened with regards to how this series set up between Shredder and Splinter and Karai. It, it's all explained. It's all Niwa. explained for us. Yes. Niwa. I gotta so. be honest. I thought you were gonna play that little Renette clip, but uh, you know that's fine. Oh no, the the Renette clip is in the beginning of the uh, episode now. So gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, this is a two K three turtles uh, update. We talked about how they uh, Nickelodeon has been uh, starting to re-release some of the two K three series. Episodes. Because it's the best of all the animated series, yes. Yes. Well, on yes. DVD. No, it is. No, now, it is. On <laughs> DVD here, that's fine. These were never in, in high def. Right? So, just want to make that clear. <laughs> we don't have a problem with that. Uh, so, uh, we actually have an update because they are going to be releasing another 2K3 Turtles DVD. This one's going to be Cowabunga Christmas. And uh, it's announced to be coming in stores mid-October from Nickelodeon. So all of you Jewish fans out there, you know, look forward to that. It could be a new Jewish tradition. <laughs> you know. I, I've heard of... Uh, one of the presents they have over the well, eight days. I'm thinking during the lighting of the first menorah, like the first candle, like you, you watch Cowbunga Christmas. Sure. <laughs> It may, maybe it makes perfect sense to me. I don't know. Maybe it's... Oh, uh, God. Right, right when they're just nailing Jesus on the cross, that's when we can light the menorah. Huh? What if okay. What if the turtles wow. were fighting Hitler? Okay. <laughs> that has <laughs> happened. Captain that America has actually did happened. Why? Exactly. That has actually happened. The turtles have fought Hitler before. Uh, during In the comics? Uh, I believe it was an Archie. Yeah. Mm. So I, don't read my, I don't read much Archie. So, See, okay. We're going to have to... Uh, we're gonna have to cover that on a future episode. I don't remember oh, yeah. all the details, but I'm pretty sure if I, if memory serves me correctly, Raphael punched Hitler in the face. Ah, very similar to Captain. America. You know that's not a Shredder kill because he doesn't have any of those because he's Raph and he doesn't. But uh, that's pretty respectable. It's not a Shredder kill, you know, like Donnie and Leo have. He's still pretty yeah. respectable. Adolf Thank Hitler you. did make an appearance. Uh, it was and Raph did. Yep. Nice. You're welcome. He said, he, he was he was screaming out for the millions as he knocked them out. Bam. Nice. Oh, very nice. Um so I guess I'll have that feather in my cap from now on. So, um, he didn't kill him. No, he caused them to commit suicide, I believe. He, right. The yeah. date of death was uh, it was uh, Archie uh, Adventure or, I'm sorry, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Adventures issue sixty four. There you go. So, and that's yeah. Exactly Raph is wearing a gray baseball cap for some reason. <laughs> oh, you got you got photos. Look at you. And um, that counts. Oh yeah, as Google a, Image. Just type in TMNT Hitler. Just so you know, that counts as Seriously? a Leo as a Leo kill. Just so you know. It does oh, count really? as a Leo kill. Oh, Future Leo convinces Hitler that they are demons and that he is in hell. Since they already have his soul, they've come for his brain. Hitler puts his gun to his head claiming that they will not take his brain and pulls the trigger. That totally counts as a Leo kill, and I will add that to the notch on the belt. <laughs> Whatever it takes for Leo to catch up to Donatello in the Shredder kill department. Th this, is, this is much more significant than the Shredder department. Uh, this supersedes any of that because it's Hitler. Uh, it, he's by far been – he's more, much more villainous than, than uh, Shredder will ever be, and he's killed more people than Shredder I will love it. kill. So – Right before Raph punches him and says, for the millions, he actually says, this small gesture is for the millions, perv. <laughs> and then he punches him and says it. Nice. Man, yeah, it got dark. Hitler. Do a Google it image gets search. dark. It's like the first thing that pops up. I'm looking up. at this now, too. It, yeah, he freaking, he commits suicide right in front of the turtles. Mm-hmm. 
in front wow. of Leo. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the things you learn on the Turtle Power podcast. <laughs> Man. The things we learn on the yeah. Turtle Power podcast. Yeah, right? and we've said that from the very beginning. You know, yeah. we don't know everything about the Turtles. You know, good luck trying to find somebody who does. But uh, this is fantastic. This is this is completely new to me. So, um, you know, we, we, we're learning right along with you. So. Oh, yeah. Google image search TMNT Hitler. You'll see all of it. It's great. Yep. It really is that simple. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. So moving on in to uh, further TV news. Um, I, guess I love how we went is... from Christmas to Raph punching Hitler in the face. <laughs> and, and then him killing himself right in front of Leo. Love it. <laughs> Bahu forest, ahu doris. Yep. <laughs> New TMNT 2D animated TV special announced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've heard us talk in the past about half shell heroes, right? You've seen them in the in the in the toy stores, in the toy aisles of of your Target. The Teen Titans Walmart. version of the Ninja Turtles. Yes, there you go. It's it's preteen version. <laughs> pre-teen it's the Teen Titans version. Go. Yeah. Version. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, there is going to be a. TV special. Uh, it's not going to be a. Um, it's not going to be a series. It's going Thank to be a single episode. Thank goodness. But uh, IDW got the uh, scoop on this. Well, this is going to be debuting Sunday, November twenty second. Half Shell Heroes Blast to the Past. And uh, basically, think. Um, Turtles in Time, the level where they were in prehistoric, uh, prehistoric Turtle Saurus, right? Well, think of think of the toys back when they came out with these toys where they each had their own uh, dinosaur with uh-huh. bandanas on them. Because I remember the Leo Triceratops and the Donatello T Rex. You remember that, really? So I remember those. Yeah, dude, I had the I had those. I had the Leo and his Triceratops and Donnie and his T Rex. There you go. Well, we yeah. do see a lot of we do see playmates come out with a lot of redoing of of old stuff. You know, just in the in the uh, Nick Turtles version, or in this case, in the Half Shell Heroes version. So, um, nothing new with regards to that. But there is going to be an associated big golden book mm-hmm. for uh, Half Shell Heroes. Where they just look way too happy to be being chased by a giant Tyrannosaurus with metal dinosaurs right behind him. They just look way too happy to be running from that. Yes. They, they uh, that's not, they're not happy. They're confident. That's that's a confident look. No, they're happy. Mikey yeah. and Raph. Have you ever seen Raph smile ever like that? Ever? Uh, ever, yeah. Ever, ever, yeah, sure. Ever, sure. ever, 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 ever? No. Yeah. Sure, sure. Maybe, maybe not when Mona Lisa's around. I mean, and we'll see. Well, the big golden book is going to be coming this September. This is obviously, you know, skewed to the the young, young, young turtle fan. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I I'll probably watch it, but not well, uh, yeah. not not something I'm I'm waiting with bated breath for. So that that's what DBRs are for. Like, eh, I guess I'll watch this now. Yeah. But I mean, this is that's what the turtles do. I mean, now now they're going to start a whole another generation. I mean, this is a great way in for all those young turtles, and they're going to fall in love with them. And then ten years from now, we're going to see more turtle stuff. That's just the way it's going to work. It's the way it always happens. Um, and I'm excited. I, I don't know. Are you? Is anybody going to get the golden book? I mean, I know. It's, no. No. Come on. No. It's not no. their first golden book, by the way. They've had it's others. Not. But, no. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Still not, just because like my nephews are like my oldest one's eleven, and he's too old for that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So leaving TV news and into comic book news. I strike two on my way down. Donatello takes out a third with his staff. Already, the pudgy ones are starting to panic. Raph loves this stuff. He's not alone. Why is he narrating? Is he crazy? 
crazy? Hardcore crazy. I love these guys! Ha! We've got a uh, update, a preview. Let's call it a preview of Amazing Adventures, number one, of course. This is the uh, the Nick Turtles comic, um, and uh, issue one is coming out here very soon. Uh, that's going to be over at uh, ComicsAlliance.com. We'll have a link in the show notes. You can get a, uh, a shot of um, one of the panels from inside. So you can definitely tell it's 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 definitely based on the Nick Turtles. Uh, Raph's got the crack in the shell and everything like that. So, but uh, out Raph now. doing his best impression of the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Uh, let's see. Out now, we've got. For the continuing IDW series, issue 48 is currently out. And uh, issue 49 currently scheduled for August 19th. That is this this upcoming week as we're recording. You know, I see the cover for issue 48. I do. I just don't like the animation, I, the, the illustration with it. I just don't. For 48. Now, that's yeah. part of the overall... Um, the overall big. Um, oh no! Wait, I'm looking at issue IDW one sub CBR. Sorry, wrong one. Okay. Amazing Adventures. Oh okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's awful. It's awful. No, oh, that covers fun. that covers horrible. <laughs> it could be so much better than what it is, mm-hmm. and just oh, yeah. But issue forty eight, uh, cover A, I'm a big fan of. But yeah. Now that's part so that's part of the the big collage um that they're that they're making I think it's a six issue collage so yeah it's 40 let's see 45 through 50 45 through 60, are, 50. are they I mean they they always offer variants are, since it's a collage piece are they going to offer variants on each yes yes yeah. and they they do have uh, a lot especially for 50 a lot yeah. of of different ones so yeah no that cover looks great i'm sorry I, yeah i got the covers all mixed up although i'm still not happy with the way leo's drawn but whatever yeah and that's uh mateus santoloco oh uh, i know when it's mateus yeah <laughs> so yeah he's been working on the the 45 through 50 big uh collage piece there so but yeah there's, there's gonna be for so we're talking about 50 now it's gonna be the regular Cover A that by Mateus. There's going to be a cover B by Kevin. There's going to be a cover C by Gabriel Rodriguez. Uh, a cover RI, which is Retailer Incentive Cover. Um, for every 10 copies, they get one. And this is really cool. This is going to be a Jack Kirby and Kevin Eastman piece. What? Uh, basically, um, Kevin... I'm oh, sorry, I should say Kirby. Uh, Jack Kirby, he made... He only did one drawing of the turtles, and um, he gave it to Kevin as as kind of a, you know, because he knew Kevin was a big fan, I guess. And this was a while back, and so now Kevin has taken that drawing and kind of updated it, you know, detailed it a lot more, and that's going to be the retailer incentive cover. And that's a really sweet cover right there. It's very special. A lot, a lot of history there. And then uh, cover subscription. This is the fifth one. This is going to be a subscription cover variant available to those with a TMNT subscription at their local comic shop. And that one is um, by Kevin Eastman and Robert Rodriguez, actually. So, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, that, that 50 is going to be a big deal. It's going to be a double size issue. Um, and by the way, in case you didn't know who Robert Rodriguez is, I should probably class, uh, clarify that. He's the uh, director of films such as uh, Sin City, Dusk to Dawn, um, and uh, apparently he's a, he's, a, he's a Turtles fan as well. So Nice. Um, let's see, what else do we got? Casey and April. That Does is, anybody uh, really care? Yeah, 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 I think yeah. so. Number two of four is out right now number three is coming out on the 26th of uh of august 
and uh, IDW Adventures. We just talked about that. Amazing Adventures uh, number one coming out this week on the uh, 19th. Um, still no further update on the Mirage reprints uh, from uh, last time, from last episode. And Archie, I don't think there's any other updates on that one either. So Nope. Told you, folks, it's a slow news. <laughs> it's a s- slow news month in the world of turtles. That's okay. We got a lot of good stuff here with collecting news, though. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's go into collecting news here. From Playmates! Um, so this this made some decent waves on the, uh, on the old interwebs. Gave us something to talk about, that's for sure. Yeah, so... Three Zero company we've talked a bit about in the past. Um, they are one of these uh, high-end uh, collectible companies, and they had previously made um, uh, figures. I don't know if it figures, statues, um, high-end collectibles. I like high-end collectibles. Um, they had their one-six scale figures for the uh, the twenty fourteen Turtles movie. Well, they are going to be uh, coming out with another new set of uh, collectibles, high-end collectible figures. And uh, as part of that, they did a interview with Kevin Eastman. And the strange part is they didn't post it on a website, like their own website or anything. They posted it on the comments of a photo gallery on their Facebook page. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, it, it kind of a really weird spot. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Yeah. So, um, we'll have, a, we have a link to it in the show notes, but, um, uh, it, it, I guess they, they talk a little bit about, uh, Kevin and, uh, designing Kirby, um, as you know, the fifth turtle. Um, they talk a little bit about the IDW series and, and just how well it's going. Um, they, they ask, uh, can you share with our readers a few other characters you would like to develop with three zero after the first four turtles are available? Um, said he's always wanted to see a really well done April O'Neil, uh, elite foot soldiers and a redesigned slash from the IDW series would be exceptionally cool. Um, any, uh, any other things, uh, stick out for you guys on this? I'm sure Alex would want a new Leatherhead or something with Leatherhead. It'd be nice to see uh, some of the uh, some of the '80s villains, uh, the original um, uh, TV series uh, villains, come back to life uh, in this form. I mean, they look so good. Leatherhead would be pretty sweet. Uh, Rat King, new Rat King or old Rat King? I don't know. I, I still I'm still partial to the old Rat King. I don't know about you. Guys. I kind of prefer the new one. Do you? It, yeah. It's 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 close though. It's close. I mean, it's not like the. I'm saying that the new one's bad. I think the new one's freaking amazing. But I'm still. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. And I mean, the the old one kind of played into the comics as well. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, but I just find it hard to be that buff when you live in a sewer. <laughs> I mean, what else are you gonna do? You're gonna work out all the time, man. Like, yeah, but and, you're not gonna have enough like proteins and calories to actually you, maintain that physique. It's a New York City sewer, man. Of course you will. No, you can find a lot of electronics to build like time machines with, like Donatello does. But food, edible, I can't. I mean, see that. He, I'm sure he comes out of the sewers. I mean, dumpster dives does something. I mean, he's a rat. Well, he's not a rat, but it's he's a rat king. So, I mean, I'm sure his rats go out and pick, grab food for him. You know, they do his bidding. Mm-hmm. So. It's, it's it's the rats. I mean, it's also we're talking about a, rat, a guy who controls rats. So, I mean, are we going to really question his diet? I mean. <laughs> rats are cannibalistic i don't know yeah i mean it's they are maybe they <laughs> they breed just for him and they he eats the young yeah with chopsticks for some reason i'm just picturing that don't know why i can see that i can see that but anyway yeah, yeah, well, I, yeah. I can see a lot of i mean i'd love to see a lot of different characters uh reinvented in this form no I we sh- should should mention that uh these these 12 inch figures in the uh, they call it mixed media fully articulated style um they're not normal versions of the turtles nope. um they're they're different so they're what the movie should have looked like <laughs> oh 
Ooh. I mean, seriously, they, they, like they're it. they're different, yeah. but I I could I can envision these guys in a movie. We we mentioned this at um when in our last episode about the uh, SDCC. So in case you hadn't seen the photos, um, you can also see them here in this link. But you know, like Raph has like a full face mask on. I believe that's Raph. Um, I think so. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's see, that might be Donnie. Has got like a basically what Raph has in the in the movie. With just kind of minus like a, sunglasses that he'll never yeah, wear. Minus the sunglasses, right? Oh god. So, um, yeah, it, he talks a little bit about he's got like a little backstory for these uh, these figures, and he also talks about some of the other new projects. Um, some of like we talk, he talks about Los Angeles, which we uh, talked with him about when he was on the show. Um, he says he's got a lot of stuff going on. He's uh remastering a colored version of a book he created with uh, Simon Beasley called Fistful of Blood uh, which will be um, out starting in October and right after that is uh, Los Angeles so and then he talks about you know how great it is with the IDW Turtle series and they've got story ideas that'll put us all the way up to uh, TMNT issue 100 and uh, nice. how great it is working That's with awesome. uh, Tom that... Waltz and Bobby Cornell so that makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, once again, check out that in the show notes. All right, next, another uh, figure that we had talked about on the show. Remember when we talked about the uh, the Mondo? Um, now there's two Mondo stuff. There's there's the first one we talked about, which was the original turtle, um, the one where they took the drawing, the original Kevin Eastman drawing, and made a action figure out of it a collectible action figure out of it mm-hmm. well and we talked about there's four versions there's the black and white there's a color version with an orange mask a color version with a red mask and a deluxe black and white version i think which has multiple heads maybe multiple heads yeah you can swap out i think yeah well yeah that's right it's multiple heads because they have multiple masks even though it's a completely black and white body well, if you wanted nice. one of those black and white ones, you're going to have to check out eBay. They are all sold out on Mondotees.com. Uh, they do still have the color version available for with both the orange mask and the red mask. So, hot sellers here. And uh, I I know once they come out with the, the those uh, other Mondo figures that we talked about in the last episode, those things are going to go like hotcakes as well. Um, hopefully they can keep the price. I down. should add they do have a little Mikey. Have you seen this? The little Mikey vinyl figure where he's eating one of those uh, uh, Ninja Turtle popsicles with the gum drop eyes or the bubble yeah. gum eyes. Yeah, that's funny. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love it. There's a lot of them too. <laughs> so, yeah, they. Uh, it's interesting with the uh, with. Ooh, they have an Iron Giant figure. Nice. Yeah. And Hellboy and all that fun stuff. Their Hellboy figure is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's it's interesting because it's it's Mondo tees like T E E S like T shirts, and and they do have T shirts, but um, it, it's not a lot. It, it seems like it's I don't know. They're they're spreading out their uh, their options here. So, so anyway, if they could just get an Iron Giant figure with a giant S on his chest. I'd be very happy with that. There you go. Uh, next story. Speaking of those Mondo figures, this is a, a story called Brock Otterbacher talks about Mondo's figure future and TMNT love. Read more. What a uh, name. That's like a porn star name. <laughs> hmm. So uh, we've got a link in here in the show notes. It's, uh, it's basically um, Mondo's creative director of toys and collectibles. And uh, he talks about uh all the upcoming stuff that they've got and uh including those amazing turtle figures so um yeah god i cannot wait for these things to come out i just hope they keep the prices down that that they're not just insane oh man looks so good anyway you know, ryan's gonna get the red one anyway um all right leaving collectible news and into movie news. There's 
There's actually movie news? Kind of. Eh. Uh, 2014 TMNT movie. Remember remember that movie? <laughs> yeah. So it's coming out to Amazon Prime Video at the end of this month. At the end of Didn't August. take long. No. Um, so if you haven't seen it, if you have seen it and haven't bought it, but are thinking, maybe I'll give it another try like I did. Um, and you can maybe like it this time. Who knows? If you have Amazon Prime, now you're going to be able to watch it for free. So, well, it's, it's not for free. Well, if you have Amazon Prime already. Well, if you have it already, yeah, yeah. sure. But you still have to buy. If you don't, you have to buy a Prime membership. It's not that expensive. Totally worth it. Free shipping or free Prime shipping. Two-day shipping. That's what it is. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I'll watch it again. I'm going to watch it again when it comes on to Prime. There you go. Yeah, definitely going to watch I'll it. I'll watch it, but I'll have to be like incredibly high to do so. I feel like then I'll actually enjoy it. No, you won't. But uh, I, think you'll ha- I think you'll hate to it watch more. for two and a half hours. No way. You're going to hate it so much more because you're going to nitpick it so much. So it just No, no. You're going to hate it so much more, especially being. I don't know, man. They're like, like I- I'll tell you what it's it's the lifestyle out here is so good it makes the fast and the furious movies actually really enjoyable to watch those are fantastic movies that's why how about that <laughs> no they're not yeah, absolutely I'm totally just like this this runway is like 76 miles long what the hell? why hasn't vin diesel won an oscar it's a good question yeah no uh, let's, let's let's get serious okay why yeah. hasn't Vin Diesel won an Oscar? You know what? If he did, <laughs> if he ever did, it it should be for the Iron Giant. But <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he's gonna win one before uh, Leo does. I oh, hope God. so, because I would just laugh at that until I'm dead. I'd be like, guys, you remember when Vin Diesel won an Oscar before? Hey, if Matthew McConaughey can do it, I mean, <laughs> yeah, true that. It's yeah, there. Absolutely. It's there. All you need is one. You just need one good performance, and that's it. Uh, Jr. So, or anybody? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's an interview with uh, Laura Linney. Now we talked about how uh, she was being brought into the the uh, current movie that's being and made. how she is an av- how she is a very attractive, classy woman. Yes. E- even still, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Even still. Even cool. still. Very accomplished actress. Um, she talks a little bit about. Uh, filming the uh, the Turtles movie in this interview with Metro.us. She says, it was fun. It was just fun. Now it doing, was great. Now yeah. doing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to see yeah. how advanced all the special effects were is so amazing. Michael Bay did not time. try to violate me at all. It was amazing. Yeah, I had a wonderful <laughs> time. It was really fun. So the interviewer, Matt Prigg here, asks, Asked Laura, it seems like it would be an interesting acting challenge, too. Blockbuster acting is different from serious drama acting. She says, yeah, well, kind easier. of, yes and no. We'll see when I see how it comes together. What? Wait, what? what do you but mean? I just Where had fun. Are you? I didn't Where? have to cry. There was no nudity. There was no deep, deep psychological pain going yeah, on. Megan Fox was there. Don't worry. It was filmed at home. I just had a ball. It was nice to skip to work. You know what? And skip I think home. I'd rather. I think I'd rather get with Laura Linney than than Megan Fox. Actually, and I right love now, these guys yeah. who play turtles. They're really unsung heroes. Those guys. I assume she's talking about the actors. So, I love how she like got at them. Like she called them out when they asked her. They're like, "You recently wrapped up the second Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. It's amazing you haven't done a a ton of big budget blockbuster type films." She's like, uh, "Congo, you can put Congo there." Yeah, she straight I, up called them out. It was hilarious. That's all I got. True. That's not the goal well, that I had. You know what? They, they did said she hasn't done a ton, and she was like, "Well, I did one. That's well, that's a ton, right?" It's like, nah. Not I really. think she's done but more. Yeah, than, no, you're uh, right. I mean, what's? I can't really pinpoint everything she's done. Which maybe maybe they're right. If I can't really do that, hold on. I'm pulling up her IMDb. She had done more big budget films than just that. Like Mystic R- Truman Show. That's a big. That's that had a pretty big budget. Yeah, but that was uh, Oscar worthy. They're talking like nonsense movies like Congo. <laughs> Congo was not a or nonsense. half shell. Or half shell. <laughs> uh, All yeah. right. Anyway, so this is a uh, this is a uh, moving on. This is a story that uh, Tiger Claw 305 sent us. 
No, he. This is a uh, an article over on IGN from uh, Comic Con. Something that we missed. Stephen Amell discusses Casey Jones in Turtles Two. Says it's certainly not your father's or your younger self's Casey Jones, but that's because we meet him at a very different time in his development. He's not the Casey Jones. Guys, that... guys, that's how old we are. Because yeah. apparently there's a father's version of a Casey Jones. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's why he has cool cars. He's not the Casey Jones that a lot of comic fans have come to know and love. He is a guy with a job that lives in New York and loves hockey. When things go awry (laughs) and when he goes through the normal methods of what someone would do when they're a law-abiding citizen. Become a vigilante. With laughter and scorn, he decides to take things into his own hands. Yes, that's what normal people do. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah. We have so many vigilantes nowadays. Um, okay, look, look. Okay, it's not gonna. St- I'm not gonna. No, I can't do. Okay, yes, no. Look, <sighs> there's no need for this. Like, but it kind of falls in place with. I mean, they said they did say it. it's not the 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 character that everybody fell in love with in the comics and in the TV shows. They completely rebooted Casey Jones, just like they rebooted the entire turtles so yeah. i don't know i would be more surprised if anything in this movie resembles anything in turtles history rather than right. just being com- something completely different Stephen amell is is my saving grace to this and oh he's to, mine too yeah. <laughs> but i mean he doesn't even play hockey did, did it say he didn't he was just a fan 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 yeah i mean there has to be more to it i i I'm not just going to – I'm not going to – no. No, this isn't going to sway me. This isn't going to sway me. <laughs> I'm not going to let it sway me. No, it, there has to be more to it, right? There has to be more to it, and he's not just a fan. He has to at least play it recreationally, like as a hobby, as just for fun. There's no Otherwise, way. he's just some creepy dude driving around with hockey sticks in his trunk. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan. No, I don't I don't play. I, I just have, they're just there. I'm just a fan. I'm a fan of whooping that ass. That's right. No, yeah, that's, that's nice. That's very nice. And that's all the uh, movie news we got. So he's basically playing the character of uh, of of Arrow. Like he's like he becomes a vigilante, but he's actually pretty well off with a job. And you know, I mean, different obviously, but kind of the same. Yeah, we'll find maybe, out. Maybe they should have casted CM Punk. I don't know. As so Casey into- Jones, not as Rocksteady, as right. he was. Possibly. Anyway, no, that's start. right. Because when we first heard about um, CM Punk uh, uh, cast, you know, trying to, uh, or yeah, auditioning. Thank you for this movie. We assumed it was for Casey Jones. Uh huh. But it could. It, it sounds like now it was actually for one of either Bebop or Rocksteady. Is right. that right? It was Rocksteady. Yeah, uh, he Rocksteady. was because he was competing with uh, with Seamus. Right. For the for the role, which they tied it back to, oh, you know, he's still fighting WWE, you know, wrestlers and blah blah blah. blah. Right. So actually, works better for Punk because he's he's busy working on his UFC career now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, whenever that starts. Yeah. Let's, exactly. That's, that's exactly it's uh, what I'm supposed to be. Hey, I'm training to be in the UFC too. You know, it's just I just don't have any fights lined up right oh, now. Dude, no, you get. Look up some videos, some recent. Oh, videos I'm well aware. Him. I'm well aware that the guy's legit, but until he actually does fight for UFC, you can't really say, "Well, he's working on his UFC career." <laughs> he's under contract with UFC. Okay, well, he hasn't fought yet, so there you go. No, he hasn't. I'll, I'll root for him when it comes to it's happening. Into mutated messages. Please, please, uh-huh. a moment to reflect. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> ah. Hey, right. remember we we're actually getting to those? Him. Yep. All right, yeah. uh Daniel Paul Daniel Paul Wow, that's, he's got four names. That's, that's <laughs> let's just say Daniel. Uh he says on Facebook Oh, I really wanted you to hear you try to pronounce that third name of his. Banagua? It's, it's Banagua. Banagua? It's Banagua. There you so. go. All right, Spanish. Bro. That's the one time Alex has ever said anything Spanish on this show. No, it's not. Hey, I tried it's... to get you before, and you and you just totally Americanized it. I it's was like, by you did. it's by far the most relevant thing I've said in Spanish. But yeah. So Daniel says this is the second episode I've listened to. In short, boys, fan for life. Sweet. Which one? 
Which episode was it? Uh, I believe it was the last episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, thanks hey, for listening, thanks. Daniel. Love uh, to hear this. Chris Dever on Twitter says, uh, thanks for reading my tweet on the podcast. You even pronounced my name right. Keep it up, guys. I hope, Ryan, you pronounced it right again. <laughs> I I don't know it is. <laughs> he says, the podcast is one of my faves. Sweet. Huh. Nice. It is, in I love fact, one of my standards. Well. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at Good Bad Geeky on Twitter says, would appreciate a retweet for a fan comic Hashtag UTMNT issue one second printing via Indiegogo, so um, which which we did, and I, I said uh, we'd get a chance to uh, to talk about it on the show as well. So this is pretty cool. So this is a fan made comic, like that looks so printed good, comic. Alt is called Ultimate Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, drawn by the talented Eric Webb and written by Nick. Uh, Argenbright, yes, Argenbright. Uh, this loving that cover looks to the original t- it really uh, does, and Laird man. TMNT, uh, an homage to the pacing of Ultimate Spider Man, uh, comes Ultimate TMNT or UTMNT for short. Dude, Donatello with his bandana down like that looks boss. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I really like the art style. Um, it, it's uh, it's pretty sweet, I gotta say. So um, they've, it's uh, it's your it's your standard Indiegogo. You know you can um, you can sponsor at different copies or different levels. You can get a PDF for eight dollars. You can get a, a printed copy for eleven. So, totally worth it for the printed copy. Come on, yeah, people! It, like... it looks fantastic. Yeah. Well, first it's... they have to raise it, don't they? Uh, yes. Yeah. So they still have to raise. They've the only been out for twelve days, and uh, they've got thirty-four days left. So. Uh, they've already and got thirty-two percent of the way there. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's going good so far. Um, check it out. It's uh, we got the link in the show notes, uh, or you can just search it on Indiegogo. A second printing of UTMNT issue number one. Seriously, if like if like fifty people do the eleven dollars, they could they could get it done easy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'd be over actually. Yeah. All right. Uh, at Vegan Sarni says, I'm listening to episode 40, that's our last episode for you two, in which you discussed the pronunciation of tomato, tomato, right? See, these are my favorite tweets because they, they just prove my point to Ryan where I tell him that people actually like our banter where we're not talking about the turtles. <laughs> so she says, in the UK, we pronounce the A as a. Uh. Which as tomato. ah, not a uh, tomato. Tomato. Right. Tomato. tomato, tomato, tomato. Yes. So Darby, what basically what she's saying is, uh, you're incorrect. It is not hey, not the tomato, first time I've been corrected tomato, by a British person, and tomato. probably won't be the last time. Yeah. Yeah. You, you offend everybody. You that's do. Not that I basically offend what everybody. Happens. Well, I think you do, but I mean that's that's your charm. I'm sure, I offend well, some. That's part of your charm, man. Like, I mean, I mean, if you if you gaze upon my crops here, you will see where I grow all my fucks, and you will see that I have none to give. So there you go. <laughs> oh man, uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, at breeders ninety one. Wait, 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 wait. I should point out that we did have a British person, Miss. Uh, I want to say. Is that how you spell recognize? Maybe it's the British way. I don't know. No, I think it's just incorrectly spelled. So, see, I can correct British people too. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Breeders91 on Twitter says, London Comic Con, met someone, guys, you might recognize. Hey, that's Kevin Eastman. You and Kevin Eastman. Nice. Luke. Uh, yeah, I love that. Love seeing the. Uh, <laughs> love seeing the. Uh... You know what? Props to Luke for wearing the flash shirt. Mm. Uh, yeah, that is Shout a out to shirt. Luke for wearing a flash shirt while meeting Kevin Eastman. Love it. Now, what is the shirt that Kevin's got on? It says Streets of Madness, Loyal. <coughs> what is that? Is that loyal. NNG or KNG? I think it's KNG. KNG. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, that is how you spell uh, recognize uh, in the UK. So, sorry. Oh, Damn. in the UK. Got it. Yeah. Look at that. Um. Yeah. I knew, I knew Alex would look it up. 
Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Loyal KNG. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what that is. It looks like Shredder in a business suit holding a Tommy gun. What, yeah. What, where, where, where are you guys at? Because I was too busy looking that up to prove The picture that, uh, that Breeders91 sent us where he ah. met Kevin Eastman. Gotcha. Thank you. And uh, last, Josh Denton, our old buddy hey. at Poseidon Bastard on Twitter, says mm-hmm. another great show. And then check this homeboy out makes me smile. And this is pretty BA. So this is on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, check out The Four Turtles. Um, this is sweet. I, I don't this know. This is pretty awesome. So basically, F O U R turtles. This is yes, the F O U R T U R T L E S, all one word. And you can also go to facebook.com slash T M N T the Four Turtles. T H E F O U R T U R T L E S. Uh, the, this guy has got a uh, several of the high end uh, action figures, both the Nick Turtles and um, Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> uh, he's got the uh, the movie turtles, the uh, the the classic um, movie turtles, uh, and the doctor basically from doctor he, Who. he's got them set up in a, a variety of different um, locales and everything, and does some like really quality uh, photos. Like oh, uh, H- yeah, high quality action photos, posing yeah. photos. They're they're good. I like them says uh, all photos taken with an iPhone 5s or a Canon DSLR yeah how um, many of those do you think are the iPhone 5s's none <laughs> they all look like cannons to me yeah they're they're all really good so <laughs> some pretty cool different uh, action shots and everything like that so um, yeah definitely suggest checking this out it's very cool nice so Ryan right. is that gonna do it for us today on this that- this shortened episode it. of Turtle Power Podcast that still took us two hours to record. <laughs> yes, that well, is correct. You know, if Darby didn't have updates, then if I didn't have gotten. issues on my computer that yeah sidelined us for like thirty minutes, no, nah, I get it. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, yeah, that is going to do it for uh, this episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. Gosh, but, yeah, it, hey, it's hey, crazy, guys, crazy hey, guys, how fast guys, it went. hey, guys. Uh, so does this make two episodes in a row where we got the mutating messages? Yes. How about so. that? Yes. You got to keep the streak going. Keep the streak yes. going. And, you know, we knew we had enough time because it was going to be a short amount. But I do like putting them in the front of the show. There's just that – just to make sure that we get them. So. Um, of course. We'll, yeah. If we get, Hopefully with the next episode we'll have a, a lot to talk about and uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll need to move them up to the front. And if we don't, then you'll get a bunch of random banter and uh, and tangents, and that's good too. Definitely. So. Uh, make sure you check uh, out our uh, website, turtlepowerpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at TMNT Podcast. Follow myself at Fig Don Pat. You can follow Alex at A Rodriguez two thousand five. Follow Darby at Darby T Patton. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Turtle Power Podcast, youtube.com slash Turtle Power Podcast, old fashioned email, Turtle Power Podcast at gmail.com. And uh, make sure you subscribe and rate us on iTunes, subscribe and listen on Stitcher. You can find all those links in the show notes. Um, also, make sure uh, if you haven't yet, send in your idea for what, what do Turtle fans. What should turtle fans be called? Is it just turtle fans? Is it shellheads? Is it shellians? Is it shredders? Do you have one? Send it in. Uh, Facebook, if you just have a Twitter, topic you want us to email? talk about, that's cool too. Yes, okay. yes. If you if you want us to cover a certain topic, if you got a, a news story that you want us to cover, send it in. Definitely. We got a lot of props for that that Ninja Turtle versus the Four Robins scenario. So, I mean, if you want us to talk about stuff like that, hey, throw them at us. Yeah, we could we could talk about hypotheticals all day. So, and, uh, oh god, yes, <laughs> oh yeah. Especially um, if I uh, enjoy this Colorado lifestyle before the show, it's great. <laughs> also, um, uh, yeah, if you have anything that you want to share audibly on the uh, show as well, um, you know, send us a little recording. We'll we'd love to put it on the uh, on the show. Song of the show. Of course, once again, shell-shocked, ocremix.org. You know what we need to do? We need to get uh, somebody from 
from uh, Shell Shocked on the show to talk about the, this amazing album. Oh, definitely. definitely. Nice. Track number 11 off of the uh, first disc, the last track off that first disc. Fight Something, arranged by Jive Master, and the source is Training. Guys, thanks so much for uh, for joining me again. Well, someone has to make this show entertaining. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and we will talk to you all next time. It's a total show show.